Friends and neighbors, today I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Can you see it? Hello friends and neighbors, welcome back to The Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you for joining me once again. And today I wanted to talk about the old six string bass. I've uh, received a lot of requests for requests for six string lessons and uh, today is the day. Today is the day we dive in. This is probably going to be the first of many lessons for six string bass because I'm just going to like show you some basic exercises to get you more acquainted with the instrument if you are a six string player. I would imagine that those of you who are playing stri uh, six string uh, you know, this wouldn't be your first instrument. If the six string is your first instrument and you're a beginner bass player, hats off to you. I don't know what kind of daredevil you are, but uh, you got more guts than I do. I'm gonna start by taking you through an exercise that I talked about in the previous video. If you haven't seen that video, it's right up there. Check it out. Uh, but in that video, I talked about an exercise for beginners where we just learn the first three notes on every string. This is cool if you're just starting out on six string because if you play all of the natural notes within the first, let's say, four frets uh, on each string, then what happens is you basically get a C major scale. So you can start right at the first fret of that low B string and just play all the natural notes. Now the cool thing here to recognize is the pattern that's being created when you play all the natural notes in this area of the neck within the first three or four frets. On the B string and the E string, I'm looking at the first and third fret, right? So we go open B, C, D, first fret, third fret. And then we do the same thing on the E string, open first fret for F, third fret for G. So the first two strings are identical. And then it happens again, the next two strings down, are also identical. You have the open A, second fret B, third fret C. And then when you go to the D string, it's second fret and third fret again for D, E, F. So those two strings are identical. And then guess what? The pattern continues. The last two strings, the G and the C, are also identical. You have G, A, B, that's second fret to the fourth fret, and then when you go second fret to the fourth fret on the C string, you have C, D, and then E again. So just run those notes. You can start right on that C at the first fret of the B string and just play a C major scale. Noticing that each pair of strings is identical. So that's 1st fret, 3rd fret, and then the next two strings are 2nd fret and 3rd fret. And then the next two strings are 2nd fret and 4th fret. And then you just like think of it as a C major scale. Beautiful exercise. That's like one of the first things that you can do when you pick up a six string, is just get to know where those notes are going to be. The next thing I want you to do is focus on playing a D major scale. One of the most important things about playing the six string is understanding all of the notes that are available to you in one area of the neck. So if I'm here, I want to know everything that's happening here, so that if I'm going to play a D major scale, I don't want to play it this way. Because basically what I've done is I've taken this 2 4, 1 2 4, 1 3 4 pattern and played it in two different places. But I've neglected this area of the neck here on like the bottom three strings. So I want to know what's happening there because I already know that this is going to work, right? Mm -hmm. 
But now I want to know where those notes are here so that if I'm playing in this area, all of those notes are going to be available to me whenever I want. So a D major scale starting from the third fret of the B string, playing our trusty 2 4 1 2 4 1 3 4 pattern, and then continuing on. there that's quite a stretch you don't have to do that but <laughs> if you don't know the notes themselves which you should um, recognize the patterns check out what's happening we have two four one two four one three four that's our trusted pattern that we all know after that check it out one three four that's where we ended on the uh, what is that the a string if we play one, three, four again, those are the next three notes on the D string. So one, three, four on the A string, one, three, four on the D string. Now check this out. One, three, five on the G string and one, three, five on the C string completes the pattern. So when I'm saying two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, you probably already know this, but if you don't, I've got a four fret span happening with my second finger on the root note of my scale, that third fret of the B string, which is D. And then I'm just assigning one finger per fret. So anything that happens on the third fret, I'm calling two because I'm using my second finger. Four is anything that happens on the fifth fret because I've assigned my little finger to um, that fret, finger four, and then so on and so forth. Second finger is going to be one, because that's the, that's the finger that I'm using. And then the third finger is going to be three. So two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. And then the rest of the scale in that area of the neck is one, three, four, one, three, five, one, three, five. One, three, four, one, three, five, one, three, five. So just get used to playing that scale all the way up and all the way back. It's a great exercise and it really gets you to know the major scale as it appears on one section, just in one section of the neck, so that you're not having to jump around and basically just play the same pattern in two different positions. That's cool too, but this is very valuable information that you should all know. The next exercise is just going to get you accustomed to playing across all of the strings. We're gonna take the same D major scale, and then what we're going to do is we're gonna play a pattern that I like to call odds and evens where I play all the odd numbered notes going up and then play the even numbered notes coming down. What do I mean by that? I'll show you. If I play the odd numbered notes, I get a certain pattern. So all I'm doing there is playing a note, skipping a note, playing the next note, skipping a note, going root to the third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, there's the thirteenth, there's the next note if I, you know, skip the, whatever, the 12th. And then there's my last note. So then I want to come back with all the notes that I skipped. Those are going to be all the even numbered notes. And I'm going to go down to the major seventh below the root so that I can turn this into a bit of a loop. And then that's my pattern. This is basically a D major arpeggio that comes down on an E minor arpeggio. And that's that. Now listen, uh, I know um, a lot of people are going to ask about the technique with the right hand. I might not be the best person to ask about that because 
As you can see, I'm using a fret wrap on my six string uh, because the floating thumb technique and all those other techniques that help with muting with the right hand have never really worked for me. They've always been a bit of a hindrance to my technique, um, mainly because I've developed some bad habits over the years. <laughs> And I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to like adjust my positioning and straighten out my wrist a little bit more and, and um, clean the sound up a little bit. But I don't wanna put you through that. So there are other like great teachers that'll show you some different techniques that you can use with the right hand when it comes to muting on a six string. Todd Johnson, if you look up his technique, his floating thumb technique is fantastic. Scott Devine has some great advice. Uh, there are many resources that you can check out, but I have to admit to you, my dear friends and neighbors, I don't want to steer you wrong. I might not be the most qualified person to talk about right hand technique and muting and all that kind of business. I have my own little ways of, of getting around uh, uh, fret noise and sympathetic strings, sympathetic vibrations and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the fret wrap is a good help for me and in the meantime, I'm working on developing my right hand technique so I can uh, clean things up a little bit more. And my friends, I'm going to leave you with those exercises. That's going to be that. My name is Rich Brown. Thanks for visiting me once again in the Brownstone, and I will see you in the next video.